Every year, I do an in-depth video of the newest features in the latest iPhone. For the iPhone 13, there are so many new video-specific features that I wanted to give it its own video from a filmmaker's perspective. That's part of what we do professionally. iPhones do get used in our work sometimes, so this stuff really matters. And this year, even though the outside of the iPhone looks pretty much the same, there's a lot of new stuff in those cameras. All of the iPhone models have new lens systems, and behind those lenses are brand new, much bigger sensors. Also, they stabilize the sensors instead of just having lens stabilization. Plus, there's bigger batteries and new software features like ProRes support, and of course, cinematic mode, which we will definitely cover here. Let's go over the updates a bit. It's a bit easier to explain this here because now there's only two different camera systems. If you get the iPhone 13 mini or the regular 13, you've got a new wide lens and an updated ultra wide. In the iPhone 13 Pro and the 13 Pro Max, you've got that same wide angle lens, a much further updated ultra wide, it's a lot better, and then also a three time zoom telephoto that is also new. Now, the most important lens is always that wide angle because it's kind of what we use all the time and it just has the highest quality. The sensor has gotten 47% bigger, which means a lot more light. When you're doing photography, there's some computational things that help you out if you don't have a lot of light, like deep fusion and night mode. But you can't do that with video. It's more reliant on what the sensor is actually giving you. So that larger sensor and also the faster aperture, which now the wide angle is 1.5, gives you better results in even relatively low light, like medium sunset or indoors. Okay, the sun is mostly down now and you can see the light is getting a little too low light for our telephoto lens. A lot more situations are actually low light than you might expect. In full daylight, you won't notice a difference, but as soon as it gets a little bit dim, you can see that it's a little bit sharper and less noisy. That ultra wide lens that's updated on the Mini and the 13, I don't see a big difference. The specs are even pretty much the same, but there is a visible difference on the 13 Pro and Pro Max, where that ultra wide is now a lot faster. It's made a massive leap from f2.4 to f1.6. That's a really big jump, and it means that it's not gonna look so bad as soon as the light goes down. It's much more usable. It also has autofocus now, which wasn't even available on the previous ultra wide. It was fixed focus. So this is what enables macro photography on that lens as well. The pro models also have a new telephoto lens that is three times equivalent to 77 millimeters. That's a lot. Not a super fast f-stop. It's like 2.8, which means low light, isn't great on that longer lens, but the zoom, the zoom is very far. And then of course the headline feature across all of the 13 models is cinematic mode. So we took it to the beach in Waikiki to try it out. Now, while you look at this footage, I think your judgment of it might be slightly different depending on how you're watching this video. If you're on a computer and it is really big, or let's say you're watching it on TV, you might be seeing a lot more of the fringing detail around the subjects, an overall artificiality that you can tell this is fake. But if you're watching this on a phone, it might look kind of perfect. I mean, while I'm shooting, it, it really looks amazing and sometimes completely convincing. I think maybe one of the biggest letdowns of cinematic mode is the fact that it only shoots in 30 frames per second. Most filmmakers for cinema, are shooting in 24 frames per second, including me. That's what my YouTube videos are usually in, but this one's gonna be in 30, so that you can see the 30 frames per second cinematic mode. Seems like a big miss. Apple knows that people shoot in 24. Doesn't seem technically any harder. I wish it did that. Cinematic mode is limited to 1080 and 30 frames per second. Now, the 1080, I don't think is a big deal at all because in 4K, this couldn't really hold up anyway. You wouldn't wanna watch it that big because it'd look pretty fake. But I think the 30P, that is a mistake. I, I'm not really sure why that happened because Apple definitely knows that most filmmakers usually shoot in 24 or 25 frames per second and 30 looks a bit less cinematic. So it won't match up with videos that I usually shoot like this right now. I mean, I'm shooting myself in 24, I almost always do. But you also can't shoot in slow motion with cinematic mode. I'm sure that's a limitation of the processor, but I definitely wanna see the 24 frames per second. That'd be great. What Apple really nailed in this quality though is the bokeh does look pretty real. Especially when I was looking at Apple samples that they used during the keynote, those look completely realistic to me. I mean, I know they optimized everything about the way that they're shooting that and they've perfected it as much as they could. They're not gonna let anything bad slip out, but the blur in the background is coming from the iPhone and it, it looks like a real lens. 
One thing I'm realizing really quickly is that the depth of field from cinematic mode gets way too blurry in a closer up shot. Like this one right now, you can't have it at 2.0. You're gonna need to change the aperture for everything you shoot pretty much. The rule of thumb I'm following is that at a closer shot like this, you can probably get away with like F8. And if you are further away, you can get just that hint of blur with 2.8 or 2.0 or something. But don't do 2.0 in a close up like this. It looks too artificial. Everybody will know what you're doing. Another downside of adding this new feature is that the default camera app is getting pretty bloated and it is hard to navigate sometimes. Once you've tapped a few levels deep to find a setting, you can feel kind of trapped and it can take a second to navigate back out. There's just a lot going on here. Now, after you've shot in cinematic mode, a really cool feature is that you can update the focus in post. And that interface is actually pretty great. So all you have to do is tap edit on any of the videos. And then afterwards, you can select which subject is in focus at which time. And these have keyframes throughout the video. So there's little markers at the bottom and you can actually feel as you're scrubbing through when the focus is jumping using the haptic feedback, or you can just lock focus in one place for the whole video, which sometimes is the best thing to do. So if while you're shooting, you feel like that focus racking doesn't look realistic, do go in afterwards, do some modifications in post and it can look quite a bit better. Apple also says you're gonna be able to do this with Final Cut Pro and iMovie, but I didn't see those updates while I was making this video, so I'm gonna to have to get back to you later on how well those work. But overall, I am surprised how good cinematic mode looks. Like while you're shooting, you just, you feel like you're making a movie. Again, on a bigger screen, the cutouts, they're still not perfect. I hope we see revisions in the future so that it really can be used in a more professional context. But for now, it's really fun and it's gonna be especially fun on social media. Every year, I feel like I need to explain the relationship between iPhones and professionals. And I always say like most pros use an iPhone. Professional photographers, filmmakers, they choose Apple phones. But that's not the main reason. We also have social media and we post stories and reels and all that stuff. And we want it to look as cinematic as our professional work as often as possible. Another new feature is the ability to focus extremely close to your subject using the macro capabilities of the ultra wide lens. I tested this out briefly, but I'll go more in depth in the photography video. So that is a great reason for you to subscribe if you haven't already. Just like last year, the iPhone 13 still records in Dolby Vision and it does its own HDR mastering, which is very impressive and looks great if you're just recording stuff and watching it on the iPhone. I find that since I edit things afterwards in Final Cut Pro, it's easier to keep everything in standard definition. So I'm still not using that HDR feature very often. It looks cool, but it can be a little more complicated if you're doing professional video use. Another pro feature is ProRes, which if you edit videos, you probably already know is one of the most common recording formats. The advantage here isn't exactly image quality. It's more that this codec is very easy for any computer, especially a Mac, to work with. So it doesn't have to decompress the file. It can just really quickly edit fast. I mean, all video editors are used to ProRes files. The files are gonna be huge, which is to be expected with ProRes, about six gigs per minute. So that might be a reason to buy that one terabyte model if that's something you think you need. People that need ProRes know that they do. This is not a feature for the average iPhone user. And let's also take a second to just look at the regular 4K recording. It shoots up to 60 frames per second. Still, this hasn't changed, but it looks really good. Like it's sharp, not too sharp, great color. I love the way Smart HDR works. It keeps moving forward and looking better with each iteration. And by the way, if you're the kind of person that might be shooting professional work on your iPhone, I recommend hitting the like button because if I can get 10,000 likes on this video, I will do a video all about professional workflows on the iPhone because it's actually easier than you think. We've also got bigger batteries in every single model. So it's gonna give you a range of 1.5 to 2.5 more hours. And that is definitely a filmmaking feature because that we are the people that are killing these batteries. Going all day shooting videos will still drain an iPhone battery all the way and you're gonna to need to carry another one. So every extra minute of recording is always welcome. Now let's take a look at low light and that bigger sensor does look better. It looks sharper, less noise. We keep getting improvements like this every year. So you can kind of get adapted to them, forget that it's getting better. But when you compare it to older models, there are steady improvements, but it's not all good news. One thing that still drives me crazy is the ghosting, the flares that come out of different light sources that you especially see at nighttime and it can be distracting. 
I'm sure Apple wants to fix this. They did say that they would be able to remove them in software for photos. I don't think they've said anything about videos, but that hasn't happened either. It really needs to someday. It can be the most distracting thing, especially if you're trying to shoot these low light iPhone videos. And it's something that means it does not look professional. Big cameras don't do this. So Apple, please focus on getting rid of these little ghosts and flares because they look terrible. <laughs> also, another request, slow motion, you can still shoot 120 or 240 frames per second. I don't need it to be faster. That's already really, really fast. I just hope eventually they can apply smart HDR to those clips as well because you lose a lot of dynamic range. So to sum it all up, and if you want more details, go listen to the podcast on podcast.com, way more information about all of this. But here's what we've got on the iPhone 13. The best 4K video you can find on a smartphone, a much longer telephoto lens, which it's not going into the super zoom of some of the others, but those phones also lose quality as you zoom into like 10 times, 15 times. At three times, the iPhone still looks very sharp. A massively improved ultra wide, which I use all the time. I love that lens, so I'm glad to see it moving forward. And just overall, this is a very well-rounded camera that has some bonus features like cinematic mode. I think people will use it in the same way as portrait mode. It's like a fun bonus for social media. Probably not a professional tool yet, but I hope they keep moving forward with it. If you guys want to find out more, there's a whole playlist of other Apple information and iPhone photography tips. So you want to start watching those videos immediately. And I'll see you in the next one.